Hello, my name is Ian Clark, a developer at Anobis, and today we're going to demonstrate a simple mapping from X12, a format commonly used in America, to XML, a format used everywhere. We're also going to demonstrate a new feature, live mapping. We start by making a new mapping. We open the new mapping dialog, then we can expand the X12 types in the from tree, where we see a groups of X12 definitions, which is a lot like Edifact catalogs. We expand a catalog and pick a definition. Today we're going to use 180 or return definition. And on the right hand side we're going to choose XML. Just press OK, wait a second or so and we have an empty mapping. If we look at the X12 on the left we can expand the ISA part of the tree and we can see the horrible X12 names and the friendly descriptions which help us understand what everything is. Obviously, if you're experienced with X12, you won't need the descriptions, but I'm guessing most of the people will actually find them helpful. But now we want to look at the XML on the right-hand side. Rather than making up things manually, we're going to cheat and import a schema. Well, I say cheating, it's probably what most people will actually do. Here we're going to pick a schema we had earlier, expand it, and you may recognize this schema from previous videos. Now we're going to make things a bit more interesting with live mapping. In order for live mapping to work, we need to do a few small things. First of all, save the mapping. We're, gonna, we're not going to bother picking a very exciting name today. Now we add the mapping to the project using the add, add current file button. There we see it added to the project. If we right click on the, on the project and then click on the mapping, we can pick project item properties. There we need to change the debug type to integration server and give it a test file. There we go. We can see the input data appearing in the source data pane. Now we're almost done. We just need to turn on live mapping. We go to the debug menu and pick background mapping or live mapping. As you see, we get a warning dialog. If, uh, in this case, it's very safe to turn this on, but if you were doing an S SQL mapping, for example, and you had delete tables, this may not be such a good idea. But today, it's definitely a good idea. If we look at the target data pane, we can see we actually have an empty XML already appearing. That's it's very empty because we haven't actually started doing any mapping. So that's the next thing on our list. We're going to look. We are going to map from the ISA tr part of the tree to our new XML PC datas, and we're going to pick Interchange Sender, put it on Sender, and as you see in the bottom right, we've already got up a little bit of data in our output data pane. Ah, we've uh, moved one mapping over there, now we're going to map another couple of items from the GS group to the date and time elements. Now we can see the data has been copied from the left tree to the right tree. Now we've mapped some simple items, we want to actually put in some custom code. If we double click on the sender PC data, we turn on use editor for extended mapping, and in the code box we type alt t for target equals to upper and then alt uh, bracket alt s which brings us source and close bracket. Press OK and if we look in the target data pane the sender Enobis has now been changed to capitals. That's what two upper does. If we had a mixed case letters or uppercase and we wanted them lower, we could simply press two lower. We can do whatever we like with these custom data pins and the data will automatically refresh in the bottom right. Be warned, if you do uh, EDIC functions like delete or format, they will happen as well. That's why we have a warning before we turn on the debug data pane. And that's it for our simple demonstration today. Thank you for watching. And we hope you enjoyed the video. Please see our other videos at www.inobis.se.